Do you ever want a latte at home, but you really can't make it taste like a real latte because you don't have an espresso machine or whatever? I'm gonna show you how to make a... I'm gonna show you how to make a latte out of a French press. Sort of quantum entanglement going on over here. Trial and error has taught me this. I'm going to be using the Rowdy Roast, which was made by my brother's company, Pilot House Coffee. This is another one of his, the Whiskey Barrel Coffee, but today we're gonna do the Rowdy Roast. <laughs> There we go, there we go, in there. Right it goes. Okay, so then I'm going to grind the beans. In my bean grinder, I try to make it like super dark, so I go heavy in the beans. If you want to give it that espresso taste, it's got to be like really concentrated. So, oh shoot. Don't want to waste a bean. You can definitely already do this with already ground coffee. Um, we just have a bunch of non-ground coffee available to us because my brother owns a coffee roaster. So and he sends us stuff like coffee roasts named after myself. So like, why not roast it? But I think it did, does taste better when you grind it up yourself. But it's to totally able to be done pre-ground. Smells so good. Okay. That in books. Then you dump it in there. Oh, how did that happen? How? Oh. Okay. There's some sort of quantum entanglement going on over here. Okay. So, wait, I don't need you yet. Go away. Go away. Now I need hot water. Boiling hot water. Now you're not gonna fill it up all the way. You're just gonna kind of give it a halfway ish. And uh, let it steep. Sometime later. This has been steeping for about five minutes. I like to slosh it around a little bit, you know, make sure I'm getting some extra steep. And now it is time to bring in the milk frother. If you don't have a milk frother, um, it's not gonna be very latte-ish, you know? There's steamed milk that goes into lattes along with your espresso, so um, I recommend one. Next step is I'm gonna froth the milk, but I'm not gonna froth all of the milk. I'm going to froth a little milk. See, there's like a, like a maximum and a minimum line. I'm frothing the minimum. Minimum froth. And I suggest get a cup bigger than you think you're gonna need because this can frost some milk. So minimum frothing. It's not like chemistry, you have to be super exact. Okay, so I pop on the lid and I froth the milk. I leave you over there. All right, so now I'm going to prep my cup. This is my cup that I'm going to put the latte in. We got this chocolate syrup. This is actually from one of our favorite coffee shops. They use this exact coffee syrup. So if you have a particular latte that you like, ask the people that make it, what do they use? Okay, so uh, because I don't use it that often, I really have to put some weight on it. Okay, you can get any kind of sugar, but I like this big chunky sugar because if it doesn't dissolve, it kind of feels like Crunch it on rock candy if you get it at the bottom. I kind of like putting it on top of the foam too because of the exact same reason. And so I just put a little bit in there and then I just put some of the coffee in, but not all. Just enough to like get everything stirred in. Cause I gotta get everything to dissolve. You can use a spoon for this, but I like to take a little hint from the folks at Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf and I like to use a whisk. I whisk you. It's gonna be like super strong at this point. So now you're going to add your minimum of milk. Nice and frothy, you can see. And now I'm gonna put the rest of the coffee in it. I do it like this so you just don't get a whole bunch of coffee on the bottom, a whole bunch of milk up top, cause I kinda like the first sip to be perfectly proportionate. And then I blend it up real good. It's 
it's going to be your first taste test so you can kind of see how you like it and what you need to add or whatever. So now the froth is way down in the test. It needs to be sweeter. It needs to be milkier. And I can do that. I mix it up. Now I fill the frother up to the minimum level again. And I stir. Let's see if it's sweet enough. If it's not sweet enough now, it's not gonna be sweet enough, but if you're not stirring it good, it's gonna be super sweet on the bottom. And that's not fun. But don't make it too sweet because you're also going to add some stuff to the foam on top. Now you see the foam is like almost gone. But it's still nice and strong. But it's about at the sweetness I want. Maybe a teeny bit more sweet. Yeah, like that. I probably was trying to do this about for the first month of the pandemic when we couldn't go to our coffee shop anymore. Before I kind of really found... A method that I like. Uh -huh. I like it. I like it. It's just a little strong for my test. So if you just put it on the minimum and then froth it, it's pretty much all foam, which is what I like. Foam is like like free whipped cream. You know what I mean? It's like whipped cream is not. So I kind of mix it through a little bit, but not so much that the foam goes away. Just enough so that when I take a sip at the top, it it's not all milk. Like. So I, when I stir it, I'm kind of like pulling the coffee up from the bottom, but the spoon has holes in it, so it's not very good at that. But you can see it's kind of mixing it up. You can taste it. You can kind of taste the coffeeness in it. Maybe need a little bit more. Okay. So you can tell when it gets that darker color, the coffee's reaching the top. And then this is the topping, which is uh, my favorite top hat. I like to make little designs, make little flour. And then I just uh, barankle some of this chunky sugar on top. So this is like a chalk, like a mocha caramel latte, I guess. And now I'm like, <laughs> his hands <is> like <laughs> So it ends up kind of looking like these. Ah, it's a good latte, actually. It's really good. I like to use a spoon to scoop this foam towards me. Mm-hmm. Now I get to feel fancy at home and not spend five, six dollars or whatever. 